All right, let's do problem five. In problem five, you were told that the pressure is 33,547 kilopascals and the enthalpy is 3,333 kilojoules per kilogram. So in order to find this data, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to start with the saturated tables and I'm going to go to the table where pressure is in the first column. That's the second table. And I'm going to scroll on down till I get to that pressure. Whoa. And it ends, the table ends at 22064. What does that mean that the table only goes to 22064 kPa? Well, if you think back to the dome, um, this is the pressure axis and this is the volume or internal energy or the enthalpy or the uh, entropy axis. So you can see this table, this specific, this saturated water table describes the saturated liquid line and the saturated vapor line. As you go up in pressure or temperature, these two saturation lines begin to approach each other. And if you look at this table at the very top, you can see that the numbers are quite different, 0 0.0011115 versus 0.42035. That's because we're over here somewhere. The numbers are far apart. But as we increase the temperature and pressure, these numbers approach each other till at the very bottom, they're exactly the same, 0 0.003106. That means that the saturated liquid line and the saturated vapor line have approached each other and they meet at the critical point. That's what the critical point means. So you can see the internal energy has the same values at this last line, the critical point. So does the enthalpy, so does the entropy. So that is pretty cool. So essentially, I know that at this high pressure, 33,547, I must be above the dome somewhere. Everything above the dome is to be superheated. So right away, I can say this is a superheated vapor. And the quality is, is not applicable, right? Because we're not under the dome at all. It's not zero. Zero would mean it's a saturated liquid. It is not a number. So I'm going to go to the superheated water tables and look for 33 megapascals. And of course, there isn't a 33 megapascal. There's a 30 megapascal. There's a 35 megapascal. And if I look down the columns for H, it looks like around right in here somewhere between 550 and 600 is where I'm going to find 3,333. So what I really need is I need more table. I need higher resolution with tables, and I don't have it. But I can construct higher resolution via linear interpolation. This is actually called a double interpolation because I'm going to have to fill out this whole chart and do multiple interpolations. So let me show you what I've done here. You can see I'm kind of making my own charts. Here's a 30 megapascal section. Here's a 35 megapascal section. And I go from 550 Celsius, and I just simply copy the H values for 30 and 35 in for that line 550. So here I got 3279.7, 32.18, put that there. And then at 600 Celsius, I copy the H value to be 3446.8 and 33.99, put it there. So I was given this, this pressure and this enthalpy, and I'd like to know the temperature. I was given the pressure and the enthalpy, I'd like to know the temperature. So what I'm going to need to do is first calculate this H value and this H value, and I can do that by interpolating these values and these values. And then once I get this column filled out, I can then interpolate for the temperature. So the first interpolation I'm going to do is for the top row for 550. Here's, the, here's what the interpolation would look like. So I'm just going to take 30 megapascals minus 33.547 megapascals and multiply it by the 3218. I'm following this pattern. This is the same pattern that I've got here in the notes with this table. Plus 33.45 Four seven minus thirty five times this value thirty two seventy nine point seven, all divided by the difference between thirty and thirty five here. Notice that don't don't change the signs and make these positive. Leave everything negative 
leave it just as, as, as it would come out in the pattern because these negatives will all take care of themselves. Also notice that if I wrote the units here, that the megapascals, that's not true, the megapascals would stay. Um, the, no, the megapascals would cancel the megapascals on the top and the bottom, and I'd be left with kilojoules per kilogram. So I do this algebra, and I get 32, 35.9. So I'm going to write that here, 32, 35.9 kilojoules per kilogram. Now I need this value here. So I've done that interpolation here. Well, I set it up. I did something similar. 30 minus 33.547 times 33.99. So I got here. 33.547 minus 35 times the opposite, 3446.8. I got that here, all divided by this total distance, 30 minus 35, I get 34.12.89. 34.12.89. All right, so now I'm just going to interpolate between the H values and the T to get this value for temperature. That's what I got, that's what I got here. It's like a cooking show where, where they just bring out the uh, pre-cooked turkey here. So to get this value, I'm going to say 33, 32.35.9, the interpolated value minus uh, 3,333 times the opposite, 600. And then this value, 3333 minus 34.12.89 times the opposite value, 550 all divided by the total length, 3235.9 minus 34, 12.89. I get a temperature of 577.43. And of course, you're going to look at this and see if this makes sense. 3333 is, it's pretty close to about way between these two. And so I would expect this value of temperature to be about halfway between those two, which makes a lot of sense. And you should spot check all of these because a slight math error will give you uh, the wrong value, but it's kind of easy to spot it because you can guess uh, these are about 33 is about halfway between those. That about looks right, that about looks right. So it should all come out uh, uh, to make sense. All right, hope that makes sense and we'll do another one.